With these words, Europe is condemned to one of the bloodiest wars in history that will cost its protagonists dearly and blight the world long after peace has been declared. Germany's plan is to mount a lightning attack on France through Belgium, where her defenses are most vulnerable. Then the German army will board trains and move to the east to attack Russia. The plan nearly works. The German army is soon in the Marne region of France, knocking on the gates of Paris. The French throw everything they have in defense. Able-bodied men of all ages even driving to the front in taxis. To the northwest, the British army is preparing its defense of the channel ports. The RFC has gone to France with its few aircraft and pilots determined to create a role for itself. Equipped with a motley selection of aircraft, such as the Blériot, it seems that the aeroplane is indeed useless for the purposes of war. They are flimsy and barely able to carry the weight of its pilot. They are also very difficult to fly using a system of cables to distort the shape of the wing in order to control the flight. first week of September 1914, RFC pilots flying aircraft like this will change the face of war forever. The Germans, in an attempt to outflank the French army between them and Paris, change the direction of their advance. This maneuver is spotted by the pilots. The British rush south to block the move and set in train a series of maneuvers which take the armies further and further north towards Calais. Neither army is able to conceal its intentions without being spotted by the infernal aeroplane. With winter approaching, there is no alternative but to dig in. Trench warfare will now become the face of battle for the next four years. Meanwhile, the RFC begins receiving new aircraft, designed specifically for the observation and reconnaissance role. Aircraft such as this gun bus are also able to carry an observer in the front. With the engine to the rear, he has an unobstructed view of the battlefield below. He also has a machine gun with which to defend himself. The war on the ground, however, is going nowhere. In July 1916, the Allies launch a major offensive on the Somme in an attempt to break the deadlock. Thousands upon thousands of lives are sacrificed for little or no gain. As the winter of 1916 envelops the armies in mud and cold, the war in the air must seem like some wonderful adventure in comparison with the grind and misery of trench warfare. To add to the poor bloody infantry's misery, aeroplanes are beginning to carry small bombs. They can only inflict minimal damage but it's enough. The aeroplane is becoming useful. However, the RFC is losing the war in the air. Aircraft like the Avro 504, which had been designed in 1913, are no match for the new fighters designed specifically for shooting down other aircraft. They have machine guns which fire forwards through the propellers, improving accuracy. The machines are also smaller and faster. Things get so bad that April 1917 is christened Bloody April. The pilot's life expectancy is six weeks. Part of the problem lies with the British aircraft industry. Manufacturers are producing what they want to make, 
not what the service needs. The formation of the Royal Aircraft Factory at Farnborough, Hampshire, creates a more coordinated approach. The new aircraft begin to reverse the dismal fortunes of the frontline crews. One of the first aircraft to emerge is the SE-5A. It is one of the first British aircraft built specifically as a fighter, a role it performs with great success. It is extremely rugged, but is reasonably powerful and well armed with a forward firing machine gun. Other aircraft begin to arrive in the front line. The Sopwith Pup is a small, highly maneuverable fighter. There is also the Sopwith Camp, which is basically an uprated pup. The Sopwith triplane has shorter wings to enable it to turn more quickly. It is a design the Germans copy with devastating effect when they reveal the Fokker triplane. Aerial combat to gain control of the skies is becoming a military objective in its own right. Manuals on fighting begin to appear, but the best advice is to get on his tail with the sun behind him. Twisting and turning, the pilots perform their deadly ballet day after day. <laughs> 